Doug Star Man. So many memorable track selections on that soundtrack that I find myself still humming them while even leaving the theater. Tracks like... TAKE MY BREATH AWAY! The film I'm referring to, of course, is Dog Star Man by a man named Stan Brackage, who made a lot of uh, sort of avant-garde movies starting in the 50s all the way up until 2003 when he passed away, and he's left a long-lasting legacy and influence on this type of filmmaking. So just to get this off my chest, this is probably the most avant-garde movie I've ever done. When the term avant-garde comes to mind, what do you think of? I think of just a barrage of unexplained imagery hitting you and washing over you for an indeterminate length of time. Get some friends together, and if you don't have friends, play with yourself, but if you have friends, you know, Get them together one night and see if you can uh, stump the movie because I tried to do this one night with my buddy and we put on everything from Jesus and Mary Chain to White House to uh, White Zombie to uh, Pinky Winky Binky Boop Bop Bikini to uh, Lead Belly and um, Black Lead Belly. And really, man, no matter what you put on, you can't stump it, because everything always matches up perfectly, and it's a great experience to share with others. Some of Brackage's films have more overt meanings behind them as well than others. For example, he came out with one in 1967 called The 23rd Psalm Branch, and that was quite uh, obviously about you know protesting the Vietnam War, for example. This one takes a little bit more digging and a little bit more repeated viewing and so forth to kind of make sense of it because there's just so much going on and so much to remember. And all of these things are happening in what appears to be a somewhat familiar environment but still seems a little weird and off, which to me is pretty much a way of describing a majority of every dream I've ever had. It's like a place you sort of recognize but it's still a little weird and off. But I think I'm definitely more into the idea of not being able to explain everything about a film because on the one hand it leads to more conversation but then on the other hand, you know, not every film, not everything has to have a easily defined meaning or even like a meaning at all. There's a such thing as Dadaism, you know what I'm saying? I think you'll find some of the most unique directors that we've ever had like Jodorowsky or Lynch or Harmony Korean, they'll all agree on something. First, they'll tell you to turn your goddamn phone off, but then after that, you know, they're not really ones to sit there and explain every last detail, well, except for the Holy Mountain DVD, but they're not going to sit there and explain every last detail to you about what the film means and what it means to them, because that just kind of also takes the fun out of it, and that stops you from coming up with your own conclusions about what it means. There is definitely a rhythm to it, though, and I can kind of compare this film a little bit more easily alongside pieces of experimental music than experimental film because again it's about kind of like the rhythm and then capturing this mood. There's also definitely hard work at play since this first of all took over what three four years to put together all together and there was you know a super superimposition of images over other ones and all sorts of techniques of you know painted on the physical film or, you know, malfunctions that were left in there intentionally and stuff. But anyway, this film is regarded as a classic as it should be. It was made 50 years ago and it's still pretty dazzling and amazing to watch. And, uh, but, you know, that said, it's definitely not going to be for everyone. Definitely not for everyone. I think you'll know within the first 30 seconds or so if this is up your alley or not. For me, this is really just like avant-garde film at its best. It completely just like throws you into left field. Now, Stan Brakhage himself seems to suggest that this film is about all sorts of larger-than-life concepts, like, oh, this movie's really about, you know, like, the progression of mankind itself and, like, the history of the world all in an hour. He's probably right. He's the one who made it. He's the one 
who sees all this in there, and he's not wrong. It could be about that, and I kind of see what he's saying, especially in a film where there's so many random images all the time. It could almost be about anything. I tend to kind of veer somewhere in the middle between that and uh, it just being a bunch of random interesting images to look at. I also believe that if you watch something or work on something for long enough and have to view it over and over again, I think you're probably going to start putting together connections in your own mind of what it means. So what to recommend if you liked this one or if you want to check out like a little quicker version of it, it's somewhat similar to like the Lucifer Rising film, short film that I did by Kenneth Anger. Yeah, I directed that. I can definitely also compare this movie to one called In the Shadow of the Sun, which I only know about because Throbbing Gristle did the soundtrack. But anyway, that one also appears to be made up of like vacation footage or just like home movie footage, but then taking on this really cr creepy or just strange otherworldly feeling, you know, once it's been edited together with other images. So that was Stan Brackage's Dog Star Man. Anyway, fucking could I recommend it more? It's so balls to the wall crazy. You gotta be in the mood for it and whatever, but I mean, hey man, give it a shot. Why is it called Dog Star Man? I really need to come up with a sign off, you know? How about this? I'm wearing a kilt. I'm wearing